I'm Tyson Haskins and this is Spitcoms, where we talk to people from our favorite TV sitcoms and then they help us make raps about their shows. And today we're talking about the most streamed show of all time. It's The Office and our special guest is Bobby Ray Schaefer, but you know him better as... Bob Vance, Vance Refrigerator. He tells us about the time he took out Steve Carell, but first, he's a senior writer at Rolling Stone and now a New York Times bestselling author for his new book on The Office. This is Andy Green. Super big fan of The Office. It's great that I can talk to another big fan of The Office. Your book, gotta say, absolutely loved it. The Office, the untold story of the greatest sitcom of the 2000s. Executive producer of The Office, Jen Salata, says that your book is fascinating. Jenny Tan of the top office site, Office Tally, calls it a treasure chest of new details. The book's compiled of 86 interviews that you conducted over the course of a year. Uh, yeah, it was the busiest 12 months of my entire life, but yes, it was one year. I can imagine. What was the most surprising revelation uh, you discovered while making this book from interviewing all of these varieties of people? I mean, I learned so much about how much craftsmanship went into every episode, how a team of writers obsessed over every line. Uh, but as far as news revelations, I think the thing that surprised me the most was James Gandolfini was almost hired to be the new boss of the company in the in the eighth season. It's, a, it's this big what if of office history of what would have happened if they hired Gandolfini and not James Spader. It, it would have been a very different like final two seasons, I think. For sure, in my opinion, a, a much better eighth season. Speaking of that, how did you approach asking like the cast and the crew and the execs about some of the more controversial topics like like Robert California and uh, Steve Carell's departure? Yeah, it was sort of delicate. It was easy to talk about Carell's departure because it's not that controversial. It was just kind of surprising. You know, I was at Ben Soberman's house, who's the show's who's one of the top producers. He had the idea to uh, bring you the stakes, and he just told me just flat out that Carell wasn't offered a new contract. So that really stunned me. I had no idea, but he would know, and he was running the show. And then I heard that out of like seven more people, all top people, all producers and some of the head writers. I think he was ready to leave, but was willing to do more and then didn't get the offer. Uh, so I just asked, and with James Spader, I just sort of point blank ask. I go, I go, how was your experience to like, work with James? Did it go well? You know, and they told me their stories. Did you leave anything out of the book that you kind of regret? I had a, I had a chapter about Scott's tots. Nice. Uh, and I just didn't have enough about it from other people. I spoke to Gene and Lee, the A2 writers about it. I just didn't have enough. And I kept hearing that it said that some fans loved it and some hated it. But what are your thoughts about fans loving an episode like Dinner Party that you did in oral history about yeah. years ago? On the other hand, they don't like episodes like Scott's Tuts. I love Scott's Tuts. In both those episodes, they were written by Gene Stubnitsky and Leah Eisenberg, who are great guys. They're geniuses. And, they, and their version of Michael is Michael at his most pathetic. You can't even watch at times, you feel so bad for the guy. And that's their favorite Michael, because there are many Michaels. I think part of what's hard about Scott's Tots is it's one thing if he's messing with people that are in the office, that work for him, that gets paid. It's another thing if he's ruining the lives of totally innocent parties. They're lithium. So to watch him in a school with kids that need money for college and think they're getting it, and he's not going to give it to them, it's a different kind of like behavior that's harder to sort of watch. How do you think the the office leaving Netflix will affect the show's popularity and ultimately its legacy? If Peacock is able to take off, I think that that the legacy of the office will be fine. If it's a failure, if it's like another Quibi or whatever, which just doesn't really work with people, it's gonna be a problem because the continued popularity of the office is really rooted in Netflix. Come January 1st, that's gonna no longer be an option via Netflix. Peacock shelled out a half a billion dollars for it. So that's what's happening. In every single episode of Spitcoms, we make a rap about the TV show that we're talking about. So what's okay. a fun office reference that I can get from you to include in the rap? 
Jeez, it's getting that's getting in some landmarks like uh Poor Richards and Steamtown Mall and Lake Scranton. Okay. Just think just things around town. I like that. We'll throw it in. Okay. Andy, thanks so much, man. Uh, I got my book from Amazon. Where can office fans pick up a copy? It is everywhere books are sold. It's on Amazon. It's Barnes & Noble at your local indie shop. You can, you can get anywhere. And now we're getting the oral history from one of my favorite characters on the show. This is Bob Vance, Vance Refrigeration. What a pair of Marys. This is Pretzel Day. Just before the office, John Krasinski was waiting tables. Jenna Fisher was, you know, a part-time receptionist. Where were you at that point uh, when the office was just beginning? I had uh, a big national uh, commercials running, and I was also managing uh, a nightclub in Studio City. I hadn't really gone full-time, I mean, where acting was solely my way of making my living until the office. I'm running a business here. It's an acting business. I'm the product. How did you sell your product to Greg Daniels and to maybe Allison Jones? What was the audition Allison, process like for you? Allison, Allison Jones was the first stop. I was late getting to the audition in Hollywood because of the traffic. And I go in, I'm sweating. I'm, I, could, I was 15 minutes late. I'm the last guy of the day. I had seen the show a couple of times. I thought it was weird. And then two weeks later, I get a call for the callback and I go in and Phyllis is there. You know, the next morning I was on the set shooting. I was the first guy up the next day. Talk about your first episode and what was that like going in the next day right after your audition? It was great. I mean, I my whole thing was I was just going to be really energetic. Bob Vance, Vance Refrigeration. What line of work you in, Bob? We only did two takes of the original Bob Vance, Vance Refrigeration bit. Every scene that I, I'm in in that show is all about Phyllis. No, and it, it really shines through, actually. Yeah. There's this uh, meme that goes around that says, uh, everyone's talking about Jim and Pam are goals, but don't forget that Bob Vance bid $1,000 just to hug Phyllis. Have you oh, seen yeah. this one? Uh, yeah, I've seen that one. That's a good one. Um, yeah, I see some of those memes. I mean, they're right on the money. I mean, I told Phyllis at Casino Night, I said, we want to this to be true love. At Phyllis's wedding, Bob says the line, if you ever lay a finger on Phyllis, I'll kill you. Bob and Phyllis's wedding, what's the first thing that comes to your mind when you think back? Yeah, I met the president uh, uh, during that episode, President Donald Trump. So we were at the NBC section of the Golden Globes, right? So I go up to him, I introduce myself to him, and say, Mr. Trump, hi, I'm Bobby Rich here from a show called The Office, and he says, Bob Vance, Vance Refrigeration. And I'm really? Here. Yeah, that's what he said. The thing is at those shows is you have to act like you're happy that you just lost to Ugly Betty. Steve Carell didn't win the Emmy for uh, Michael Scott. No, they gave it to the Big Bang. Oh yeah, that makes sense. One of the biggest Scott's travesties. The most complex character in television history, and they never bothered to give him an Emmy. Hello. Wow. One of my favorite scenes is when he is trying to steal the wedding and puts up a toast and uh, does not say favorable things about Phyllis and you take him into the back. It's okay. Okay, good. You're out of yeah, here. Yeah, you're out of here. You're, I hate you! What do you remember about that scene? We didn't rehearse it. Uh, the bit where I take him through the curtains. Well, he got caught in the curtains, rolled his ankle, fell down the stairs and hurt himself. And he's laying on the ground screaming. <laughs> I am standing there like, holy sh I just hurt Michael Scott. I just hurt Steve Carell. I open the curtain, I scream, help! Oh no. <laughs> There's two sitting out there. And here come the charge of the, uh, the ADs and the producers. And the thing was is he had hurt that ankle when he was making Evan Almighty. So it was already weak. Our show, uh, Spitcoms, it combines the best of television comedies and hip hop. What reference from The Office do you think that we should include in there? Paramaries. <laughs> okay. Wrestle day, my man. You know, I've been saying this for 15 years now. Bob Vance, Vance Refrigeration. 15 years, that's a long time to hang on to a character I mean, it's still alive. I still do these cameo 
for the fans as Bob Vance. All right, so am I tired of it? No. Will I ever get tired of it? No. So am I, am I thrilled to be honored to be part of the greatest, one of the greatest shows ever on TV? Yeah. We sincerely appreciate you sitting down and talking to us. Well, my pleasure. Bobby Ray Schaefer, you're the man. We love life in Scranton, PA, where people work in a paper company and can't get away from an annoying boss who thinks attention is pay. But what can we say? I think that we can relate. I know I've looked into a camera that didn't exist. When my boss has stupid questions and I'm pleading the fifth, I've teased a couple co workers just passing the time. I've had a pair of Mary send me to the back of the line. That's right. Consider this a threat level midnight. On this mic, the insights go hard like Prison a date mic. Yup, nice to meet me. Michael Club is cheeky, can't see me like black. I got McSqueezy from sun up to sundown. Fun runs to rundowns. Bet all your shrew bucks this show sticking around. Whether it's Netflix or Peacock, I'll kick back and rewatch. If the office is Nike, Modern Family is Reebok. Oh, way more times than any show ever. Did I start? No, never so clever. I read it dead before we put this to bed. Let's do the edge truck and bobble your heads like. I wish there was a way to know you're in the good old days. I wish there was a way. To know you're in the good old days Let's go down to the warehouse and have a ball Then we'll protest and boycott the Steamtown Mall Run over coals at Lake Sprint and just keeping it real Grab that special person telling them how you feel We'll go to Fort Richards, learn to do the scar Dress up like Moe's, playing fear in the barn Hop in the PT Cruiser and slide out of the town Stop it by you to come burn it to the ground It's done to myth the forever We'll all stay employed Over 200 episodes we run and rejoice Not flashy enough? Don't mind to disappoint Because beauty in the ordinary is kind of the point What's up? I wish there was a way to